Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth. And fancy seeing you here in June. I'm very welcome, my friends. And especially my enemies come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. No, don't do it. Anyway, welcome to Saturday's edition of the DCEU Daily. And um, wow, wow. Um, the Snyder Cut is still getting more and more talked about and trending more and more times on Twitter. It's amazing. And we really are being talked about in mainstream media now. This fight, I've been part of this fight. I've seen this whole thing develop from the very release of um, Joss Whedon's Justice League. Going to the cinema, being heartbroken and disappointed with what we got. Because this is not like The Last Year. This is nothing like that or anything like that. We went to a film that was a Frankenstein's monster with horrible CGI. Horrible, not just bad CGI in an opinionated sense. It was horrible what they did to Cavill. Horrible. You couldn't get him? Don't do the reshoots. Go with the movie, The Man Made. What is your problem? Ridiculous. Anyway, so we are being talked about with, by some very important journalists, and this is important. Now, um, yesterday should have been the day Justice League 2 was released. It wasn't. Um, so... Um, and it all connects to the Snyder Cut. And I mean, I, I did a video about it yesterday, but I think we have to keep on talking about it. We have to keep on hashtagging about it. We know we're trending all the time. This movement is getting bigger and bigger all the time. Comic book fans are getting involved now. You know, mainstream movie fans are, are kind of getting intrigued by this now. In the end, Warner Brothers will have no choice but to release the Snyder Cut. And I'm not talking about 20, 30 years time. I'm talking about this year, next year. It can happen, but we have to keep on fighting. But one journalist who's been involved with this movement from the very beginning is Stephen N. Colbert. He's written some beautiful articles and he's written another one here. So should we read it together? Come here. It'll be fun. Justice League 2 was supposed to release today. Here's what the story was. Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 was supposed to release today, but instead fans are still campaigning for his version of the original Justice League, which we never got in theatres. It's well known by now that the pro progenitor of the DCEU had a five-part story to tell for Superman and the Justice League, starting with Man of Steel, culminating with Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice and the Justice uh, League trilogy with the Man of Tomorrow at the centre of it all. Isn't that amazing? As a Superman fan to think that Superman was front and centre in Zack's vision. Instead, after a family tragedy, Snyder was pushed off of Justice League, despite being deep into post-production, and Joss Whedon was brought on to rewrite, reshoot, and otherwise overhaul Snyder's movie into something Warner Brothers thought would be a more palatable and mainstream movie. Not only did the effort not garner the movie any favour with critics and, and bomb at the box office, but it quickly became a meme for its shockingly obvious reshoot in Henry Cavill's CGI upper lip. Needless to say, if Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 wasn't already off the table, Justice League's theatrical cut was the final nail in the coffin. Nevertheless, with such a bold and polarising vision for the universe attract, attracted its share of passionate or just plain curious fans, the quest for the Snyder Cut, which Snyder says is real, has, un has unearthed massive changes to the movie's tone and story, creating even more interest in what Snyder would have brought to the table. With Justice League 2, we, know, we may not have the full picture yet, but a number of things about the plot for Justice League 2 have come to light in the last 18 months. Zack Snyder's cut of Justice League was supposed to be over three hours long and would have, would have introduced mega-villain Darkseid, including a cliffhanger moment at the end, where he reveals himself to the League after they defeat Steppenwolf. While much of the movie was significantly altered or removed, the larger brushstrokes of the ending for some characters is consistent with what Snyder intended. But there are also some significant differences for others. Superman is back in Metropolis, and brighter than ever, Bruce has started to convert Wayne Manor into the Hall of Justice. Flash had learned to time travel for just a few seconds in the third act to save the day. And Cyborg has embraced himself as a hero. And the closing monologue would have been from Silas Stone, not Lois Lane, giving an inspiring message to his son via a recorded message. 
While Silas lived in the theatrical cut, he was supposed to die in the Snyder cut. Cyborg was supposed to be the heart of the movie and would have also been shown to have the power to, to, to revive super, even Superman. Snyder shot 100% of Justice League's script, including scenes with actor Ray Porter, who had been cast as Darkseid, and was deep into post-production when he left the movie. If that plan hadn't been scrapped and hastily redone at the final months of production, the dark side cliffhanger at the end of the Snyder Cut would have set up Justice League 2. And how amazing would that have been, right? Which would have been produced and released by now, barring any production delays. While Zack Snyder's whole five, mu five movie arc was planned out, Justice League 2 never had a proper script and didn't even have a writer assigned yet. Chris Terrio rewrote David Goy's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice script and wrote Justice League but said before Justice League started shooting that he wasn't sure if he'd write Justice League 2 or not. Um, look, I'm very confident that Chris Terrio would have been involved. Um, at that time, probably hasn't agreed a deal, asked him too early, and that's it. So, And anyway, because everything was up in the air as well, this is the problem. Warner Brothers had no faith in Zack Snyder. So that's why he probably wasn't signed up. Since Justice League was rewritten in response to Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, critical hammering, Justice League team would have also presumably needed some adjustments to match. However, the overall story doesn't seem to have been scrapped so much as toned down, meaning the main plot points we know about Justice League 2 would have presumably stayed mostly the same. Darkseid was to be introduced in the first Justice League, with Steppenwolf being the primary antagonist, think Sauron and the Nazgul in the Fellowship of the Ring, but Justice League 2 would have seen the League face off against Darkseid directly. Justice League's history lesson would have set up Darkseid using the anti-life anti -life equation, a formula that eliminates free will, although Darkseid was replaced with Steppenwolf in that scene for the theatrical cut. So while the fiery symbols that etch into the ground when Steppenwolf hits it with his hammer were intended to be the anti-life equation, this was never specified in the theatrical cut. The most logical story would have been something at least loosely inspired by Grant Morrison's Final Crisis, a story that sees Darkseid invade Earth and subdue humanity with the anti-life equation. Snyder shares a number of story sensibilities with Grant Morrison, and in addition to the relevance of the anti-life equation, there's some additional plot points that support a Final Crisis as inspiration. The Nightmare Timeline, first established in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, is entirely absent in the theatrical cut of Justice League, but it was originally meant to be a much bigger deal for the original five-part arc, and is likely what, what tied the whole story together exactly. The original Justice League script was Darkseid Boomtru into the Batcave to kill Lois Lane, who, whose loss makes Superman um, susceptible to the anti-life equation putting him under Darkseid's control and setting off the series of events we see in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice nightmare sequence, eventually resulting in the Flash jump, jumping back in time to warn Bruce. Only from the events of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice we know that he was too soon, so Bruce isn't able to understand what Flash is talking about yet, and may have misinterpreted the warning to be about Superman instead of Darkseid. In the Nightmare Timeline, Batman and Cyborg build Flash a cosmic treadmill in the Batcave. Using the treadmill, the Flash can jump through time, but since he's staying stationary in space, as he does it, he can only jump to specific points in time, where the Earth is in the exact same location in space, or he'll just time jump into a vacuum. This is a brilliant article, isn't it? After Nightmare Superman kills Batman, Cyborg identifies two windows Flash can jump through, to lead him to a time before Darkseid killed Lois, where the Earth is in exactly the same position. Cyborg chooses one of the windows, but when Flash arrives, he realises he's too soon. However, now that Batman has been warned about something, Luther's seemingly unhinged rant at the end of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice ticks him off that he needs to prepare for something darker, possibly leading him to form the Justice League earlier than in the Nightmare timeline. The exact sequence of events isn't clear and the script would have been changed to align with the Justice League rewrite, but it's possible Bruce still isn't able to stop Darkseid from killing Lois, resulting in the Nightmare Timeline again, only the first time he knows that whatever window Flash ch chose was too soon. This time Bruce asks Cyborg which one he would choose, 
And after Cyborg identifies a window, Bruce chooses the opposite one, choosing a point in the timeline that allows them to save Lois and prevent the nightmare timeline from ever happening. Justice League 2 would have probably finally been the introduction of Green Lantern and how awesome would that have been? Of all things we know about Snyder's plan, exactly how Green Lantern fits, fit into, fits into it is one of the most unknown aspects, but he did tease Justice League 2 as the movie where it would happen. At one point there was a post credit scene planned for Justice League where Bruce wakes up in his lake house to a green glow and encounters the Green Lantern, Kilowog and Tom Ray. Oh my god, how fucking awesome would that have been? Warner Brothers, I hate you. I genuinely hate you. But it appears that concept was abandoned even before Zack Snyder left Justice League. Charles Rovin is said to have been a big fan of Mark Wahlberg and wanted him as Green Lantern, explaining an image of Wahlberg posting with portraits of the BVS cast in his office, but nothing was ever finalised. Um, I don't know. I love Mark. I do. I think he's had a great career with music and um, movies, but I'm not sure about Mark Wahlberg, and I don't think that's the man that Zack would have wanted. Snyder has also confirmed Batman was going to die in Justice League 2. The exact nature of his death isn't known, but he sacrifices himself to kill Darkseid in a final crisis. Batman was expected to sacrifice himself to defeat Darkseid. This has caused a bit of a fan outrage, but makes a lot of sense if you understand the context of what Snyder was doing with his DC movies. Now, at first, I was kind of, what, you're going to kill off Batman? But this actually makes a lot of sense. You kill this kind of older Batman, he's redeemed himself, then you can actually still bring, because basically it was Jeff Johns who brought in Matt Reeves to do the Batman. So what you do is, right, you can pull another Batman out from another part of the multiverse, right, which could be Robert Pattinson, and you could still have Batman in the DCEU, actually. So I think this is what they were going to do anyway, and they were just going to kill him off. So I actually think after Justice League 2, Ben Affleck was never going to be involved anymore anyway. Now, of course, originally the plan was to actually have Ben write and direct and star in a Batman movie, which never happened. So... I don't know. I, I don't know what changed, but I do know Ben was having a lot of problems with his drinking and substance abuse. So it all became unworkable. Maybe that's why they decided to, to kill him off. Ben Affleck didn't ever sign up to be the next Robert Downey Jr. or Hugh Jackman. Affleck had already sworn off the superhero thing after disastrous Daredevil outing, but Snyder's older grizzled take on the character won him over. The fact that it would be just a handful of movies and he'd be done was surely also an appeal. As part of a charity t-shirt campaign, Snyder's released a shirt full of a variety of class and mis mystical symbolism, identifying a full arc of his five-part um, movie franchise. There's a lot of vague and layered meaning to the symbols, so we don't have to break the whole thing down fresh here, but one major reveal from the t-shirt is confirmation that Batman sacrificed himself to save Lois Lane. Lois and Lois and Clark go on to have a child, who they named Bruce, as confirmed by Snyder on Vero. This is obviously a, f a huge full circle moment after the conflict of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. It would be a beautiful moment and for Superman and Lois to have a child, that's interesting. But, but, how do they have that child? Is it Connor Ken? That could have been a kind of interesting thread as well. Having Superman reproduce and name his child after Bruce knows not only a resolution of opening of Man of Steel, where Cal is the first naturally born Kryptonian baby in generations, but now he's also had a natural child of his own, spreading the hope of Krypton to Earth, as jor intended. And of course, it's not, it can't be Connor Kent if it's going to be Bruce, but that, that Bruce child could end up being, you know, how does Lois have Superman's child? Were they going to explain that? I, I'm not quite sure. While the Snyder Cut of Justice League is significantly complete and could be released, Justice League 2 unfortunately only lives as a basic story treatment and maybe some early concert art at most. While this story is doubtful to ever be fully realised on the big screen, there is an argument to be made in favour of it being adapted to a graphic novel or animated film. So the fans can see the rest of the story Snyder had planned and bring semblance of closure to the whole situation. Wow! Oh, that article was so long and wonderful and I was getting so into it, I thought, have I kind of um, negated onto another article? But it was 
you know, he's Stephen and Colbert always does great articles. I'm a, a, an ambitious fellow. And I hear people saying, let's have um, Justice League 2 and the Snyder Cut as an animated format and all this. No, no. We are getting somewhere with this movement now. It is working. Not only can we get the Snyder Cut released, we can get Zach back to make his Justice League 2 movie. We can. We can. It can happen. A vacuum is happening here. The whole of the industry knows what happened to Zack Snyder. Despite his daughter ending her own life, imagine going through that. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about a man who was told, the man who stepped, let's say the man did step down because of his daughter, which is totally understandable, right? He thinks they're going to finish his movie, or maybe he doesn't, who knows? But let's just say he does. So he goes away. All of a sudden, they got Joss Whedon in, but he says Joss is there to finish his movie. What if he actually believed that? So let's just say he believed that, right? All of a sudden, the movie comes out. He doesn't see the movie, and all his fans are telling him that it's a Frankenstein's monster. They've cut it to bits. They've destroyed the movie. How would you feel? I believe every moviegoer should think this is important. We need to fight for the Snyder Cut. We need to fight for Zack Snyder to finish his five-movie arc. And with this vacuum going on, with mainstream media really interested in this story, we had John Campier ranting and raving last week that the Snyder Cut doesn't even exist. We know that's bullshit. We know that's not true. But with someone like Campier talking about the Snyder Cut, it helps. doesn't matter what he's saying. He's even done a video to go on, to bore on about his theory and everything. It doesn't matter. The more these idiots talk about the Snyder Cut, the more of the mainstream are going to start being curious and coming to channels like this, channels like Ping Pong Flicks, you know, and the screen, people like the Screen Junkie, and they're going to want to know more. How is it? Because it's the most fascinating story behind the gates of Hollywood. It really is. We can get this film released in the next couple of years. We can. We can get Zach continuing what he was doing because his vision was beautiful. Now, maybe they want to make more money, but there is a way to do both, to finish this arc and let them continue with what they're doing. It's important. It matters. But we have to keep on fighting and we have to keep on believing. Let me know what you think. Please comment down below. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.